Okay, so there are so many things going on in the media right now that I can't even just pick a couple of them. But I'm going to start with this. I'm going to start with the Caitlyn Jenner sort of um, comment about the people being uncomfortable if someone looks like a man in a dress. And I want to say this. Listen, we're all attacking her for um, for these comments that she's making. And we're forgetting that Caitlyn lived her life as a man for 65 years. Even as a transgendered person, she still identified physically with being man. So a lot of the comments she's making are maybe in direct sort of like correlation to what she's been through or how she's felt as when she was a man. So I think we need to sort of give her a bit of leeway. I think that it's sad that we make one person to sort of go to for all of the things that are transgender, but that's the way the world works. And so we need to work with it. I think that what she's doing in and of itself is kind of an amazing thing. Like I said, she's creating dialogue that hasn't been done before, right? Middle America is now talking about trans rights. So many things have happened like, um, the, the transgender acceptance into the military, how that ban was lifted. I mean, lots of big things have happened and we have to think that it's in part due to these high profile transgender people like Caitlyn Jenner or Laverne Cox or Aidan Dowling or Chaz Bono and so on and so forth. So yeah, I think that we need to give her a bit of leeway. Yes. Her comment, well, not particularly worded well, um, was offensive. Uh, But, you know, I think this goes back to exactly the same thing as when she was on Ellen and Ellen sort of pressed her and attacked her when she said the whole, you know, if the word means so much to you, yada, yada, yada. People have to remember that as a transgendered person, we're sort of entitled to the same rights as, uh, you know, as long as our gender markers are changed and all of those other things, we're entitled to the same rights as a, as a cisgendered couple cisgendered heterosexual couple so i don't a lot of things don't play into us i've always said that i can understand why people don't want to let gay people adopt children because and let me clarify something what middle america and middle canada sees on tv of gay people is gay pride which is half naked people walking around drinking and acting a fool they don't see the normal people like you and me you know who are trans or who are gay who are just like normal remember normal and They don't see that. That's not what the media shows. The media glorifies and sexifies everything. So I've always said I can understand why a couple wouldn't want to let a gay couple adopt. I can see that. Um, But yeah, I think it's just, it's, I think we need to give her a little bit of leeway and maybe start taking everything she says with a grain of salt. And this way we won't be all so fucking offended by it. Won't get our panties up in a bunch. You know, is it is it wrong that she wants to look good? I mean, listen, I've come on camera here and not looked my best. And if I read some of the comments that were made before I deleted, they're not very nice. But when I come on and I'm put together, people are a little nicer. So is it so wrong that she wants to look her best? I don't think so. Now, moving on to something I can't even wrap my hat around this so this priest this fucking priest in New York City let me read it to you Catholic priest embezzled one million dollars that's one million with an M M one million dollars from New York City churches and paid it to a bodybuilder master for sex a new lawsuit accuses Reverend Peter Migeli, a priest in the Bronx, New York City, of embezzling more than one million from his churches, St. Francis de Chantal Church in Throg's Neck, where Migeli remains the pastor, and from his old church, St. Francis Cabrini, over the past 10 years and using it towards sex sessions with his bodybuilder, Master. The Reverend Peter McGilly reportedly paid $1,000 per rough sex session with his hunky lover who demanded the priest address him as master and drink his urine. What part of this surprises anyone? Please tell me what part of that surprises you? That a priest... 
would pay for sex or drink piss. I mean, I mean that that's even a bit beyond what I think of the comprehension of what, you know, but I mean, you know, all I could think of when I saw this was thank fuck it wasn't a kid. You know what I mean? And I know that that's a, that's a that's a shitty thing to say. It's not meant to be a joke, but thank God it wasn't a kid. At least this priest is sleeping with a fucking adult. Right? Come on. I can't even, yeah. The stuff that are headlines these days, I can't even. Yeah. <sighs> Other than that, I thank you all so much for your support with my, um, with my gay for pay video. That seems to have done uh, very, very well, and I thank you for that. Uh, other than that, yeah, other than that, all I can say is that I love you all so very much. I thank you for tuning in. This is a very quick video because I am literally on my way out the door to my day job, and so I wanted to get this up and polished and out so that I could make a comment on this stupid situation. Um, as always, please don't ever forget to comment, share, and subscribe. I will catch you all on the flip side. Bye. Don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe.